Dear listeners, I am uh, speaking to you on behalf of the uh, editorial board of the Baltic Yearbook of International Law. Uh, the Baltic Yearbook of International Law I'm holding uh, in my hands and uh, this is volume 19 uh, of 2020 and volume 20 uh, of 2021 has also been finished and has been submitted to uh, the publisher. And uh, I would like to tell you more about uh, the editors-in-chief, the editorial board and the advisory board of the Baltic Yearbook, and also um, what it is um, and uh, how, in fact, important uh, this uh, annual publication for the Baltic States is. The Baltic Yearbook of International Law was established in 2001 and uh, it <clears throat> came to being uh, because of uh, very good collegial relations between uh, international lawyers at that time, very young international lawyers in Latvia, uh, Lithuania and Estonia. And since then we have a joint uh, editorial board consisting of uh, known uh, experts in international law and European law in the three Baltic states and uh, being uh, directed by three editors uh, uh, in chief, uh, myself and uh, my colleagues, professors Lauri Malkso at uh, uh, Tartu University, as well as Professor Daniel Jalimas, the former president of the Lithuanian uh, Constitutional Court. Um, the Baltic uh, Yearbook of International Law uh, is now since uh, volume uh, 18 has found uh, its home finally uh, in the Baltic states um, and indeed in the middle of the Baltic states uh, in Riga at uh, the Riga Graduate School of Law and the office of uh, uh, editors-in-chief uh, is uh, chaired by my colleague um, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, um, uh, lecturer at the uh, Riga Graduate School of Law um, and, and the specialist in, in legal research, Ligita Gjotlere. Um, we are very happy to locate uh, from Sweden uh, to Latvia because originally that's where the yearbook uh, was being prepared and published. And since 2001, it has been um, uh, a place to publish research in international law and in European law for uh, the uh, new generation of uh, Baltic scholars, uh, those who are interested um, in this uh, vast uh, area of law. It's been also uh, a publication uh, which pays particular attention to the issues, to the legal issues of interest to the Baltic states, such as uh, the uh, general uh, concept of state, such as um, the, uh, the, uh, the violations of international law, such as uh, the use of force, um, such as the analysis of the consequences of illegal occupation. Also many issues linked to um, the accession of uh, the Baltic states to any number of international organizations, one of the last being uh, European Union and clearly uh, one of uh, particular importance uh, for the Baltic states. So we can say that the Baltic Yearbook uh, throughout uh, by now almost 20 volumes has contributed to the study and research uh, in international law and in particular in the field of statehood in view of the Latvian, uh, Lithuanian and Estonian histories, it is very clear why uh, statehood has been the central topic of the uh, young Baltic scholars publishing. It's not only Baltic uh, scholars, uh, the yearbook over the years uh, has also uh, given a fora to many uh, internationally known uh, international law researchers. So it has really uh, been a Baltic contribution uh, um, in many respects 
to the development of rule of law uh, in international law. Now, uh, this year uh, is, um, is a difficult year. Um, we have seen, uh, unfortunately, yet again uh, in the history of Europe, um, grave violations of international law taking place not far away uh, from the Baltic States. With the uh, invasion uh, by Russia of Ukraine, the fundamental principles of the United Nations Charter have been uh, violated. Uh, the Baltic Yearbook of International Law, uh, the, uh, the editors-in-chief uh, have uh, decided to organize um, a uh, colloquium on the topic the war uh, in Ukraine and the Baltic states because we see uh, um, a number of uh, parallels, not very happy parallels, uh, between what uh, Ukrainian people are uh, experiencing today and what the Baltic uh, people uh, experienced um, in between uh, the, the, uh, before the World War II and after the World War II uh, when uh, the Soviet Union uh, occupied uh, the three Baltic states. And so examining uh, the legal parallel uh, legal issues or legal issues of mutual uh, interest uh, for uh, the Baltic states and Ukraine uh, will be the focus uh, of uh, this um, uh, colloquia. A seminar that uh, we will uh, stream uh, online and uh, the participants, uh, contributors to the seminar from the Baltic States, but also uh, those with uh, uh, interest in Ukraine and, and possibly from Ukraine will be taking uh, part uh, in this seminar that uh, we will uh, hold uh, in September. And uh, it is therefore that uh, I am inviting you to follow closely also the information on the Real Graduate School's uh, website and on the school's Facebook and, and uh, Twitter accounts. And, and certainly, uh, if you have been doing a research uh, on relevant international law issues, linked to uh, the war uh, in Ukraine, uh, you might also want to consider submitting your research uh, to the editorial uh, office at the Riga Graduate School of Law, and you do have um, the information uh, available uh, at the, uh, um, the address and, and whom to contact and how to reach uh, uh, Ligita Gjotlere you have uh, the uh, uh, information available on the website. And so that uh, you would uh, see uh, how much scholarship, uh, um, uh, I think, importance, but also the scholarship that has contributed uh, important reflections in the Baltic States and beyond, you can turn your attention to the uh, shelf in the library of the Graduate School of Law, because that's where the volumes all are available. And you are very much invited to come to the library and to consult uh, the yearbook and also the entire collection, which is a great collection of uh, books in uh, fields of international law, human rights, humanitarian law, European Union law, constitutional law, and many others. Um, you are very much invited to, to come to the library and study, research and write.